Thank you. Hey everyone, uh, we're going to be having a rapid match here between Sophie and Atulia. Um, we they are going to be playing four games of fifteen plus two, uh, and uh, guys, anytime you want to start, go ahead and send the challenge. All right, give me one sec. I'm gonna go live on my end. Okay, no problem. But you can shoot me a challenge whenever you want. And I'll just accept it in a second. Hey, everyone in chat, how's it going? I see Charlie, I see Thor, I see Chess Latte, PB Corporal, Seth, lots of people joining. Cool. I'm good to go, I think. All right. Sounds good. And the first game has started. Uh, so we've got uh, Atulia on white and uh, Sophie on black. OK, and how do we disconnect computer audio again? Apologies. Uh, it's at the bottom of the uh, Zoom call. You should be able to, uh, under the mic, there's oh. a leave audio. All right, sounds good. How do I, let's see. All right, so we see a Queen's Gambit declined. I think the board is synced up uh, properly. I turned off the evaluation so that uh, the board's not shifted over. All right, so we get to see the Knight C3, Knight F6 line of the, uh, and into an exchange. So exchange variation of the uh, of the Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, we get to see the Carlsbad structure. Uh, we've seen quite a few of these here in the dojo. Uh, very rapid moves. Uh, both players know this opening fairly well, it seems. Uh, rook D to G1. <coughs> That's uh, something I'm not used to. I'm also not used to seeing white queenside castle like this. Uh, so a very interesting setup uh, here from white. Um, black is in turn. Oh, did I lose my camera? Uh, let me try that again. Uh, so black is in turn launched uh, their pawn up the board. Um, I'm not sure why my camera went out. Okay, there, it's back. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so here, uh, White will take his time. Decided on b3. Uh, Black was prepared with bishop e6. Uh, so this is a, a 15 plus 2 game. So the, both players have plenty of time. Uh, the move 14 has just been played. And uh, I expect now that we're in a pretty complicated middle game, uh, that they'll probably spend some more time here. Yeah, uh, this is just a, a training match. Uh, I believe Sophie has a tournament in 15 plus two coming up. So uh, she asked, or they asked for a a um, training match with someone and Atulia uh, agreed to one. A uh, casual player, it's 15 plus 2 rapid. Right, uh, bishop traded for knight, uh, followed by advancing the pawns. So white has decided to go go for uh, Sophie's throat here um, with the pawn advances. Uh, however, now Sophie has the bishop pair, but it's hard to say if the, the light squared bishop uh, feels all that great for for black. Um, C5 break uh, here. If uh, black can break up the queenside pawns uh, and in, in the center, uh, the light squared bishop will feel much stronger uh, on E6, as well as um, the king on C1 will feel a lot less safe once this uh, C file is completely opened up. Um, very similar we saw in Kostya's game 
uh, last night, uh, Kostya brought his king over to the queen side onto c2, where uh, he felt it was safe, but then his opponent ripped open the c file and uh, quickly Kostya came under fire. So let's see if, um, if this game goes any similarly to that. Chess Latte arguing against the Chess Late. Uh, yeah, Chess Latte, unfortunately, it takes a few months for the nicknames to stop. <laughs> so yeah, C C5, I, I think, was a very great uh, move by Black. I, I think it makes a lot of sense to try to get the, uh, the king opened up there on the queen side and uh, give extra scope to, his, uh, to their bishops. And um, yeah, I think that this could be be good for black um however that those those pawns on h4 and g5 are quickly approaching the king uh, uh i i forget who said it but uh if I, if there's a knight on f8 there's no mate uh, i think is uh the saying so uh potentially black is okay here yeah thorbitals uh i agree uh when the nickname's not true it seems to last longer it's too late, just late. You already mitched it. Yep. <laughs> so here White is spending his time. Uh, I think that this makes uh, a lot of sense to spend time here. Um, we're already to about to move 18, and uh, um, they've uh, only used uh, four minutes, so definitely can can feel safe using some extra time to figure out if his uh, kingside attack is going to be working out or if uh, if he needs to put more into the defense here. Um, my first impression is that the black side is probably um, faster to the attack here uh, just due to the white pieces uh, being on the queen side instead of on the king side other than the rooks there. Um, I think white probably wants to get their queen from uh, c2 into the action um and so here I, I i i would feel comfortable playing black but uh i can definitely understand the logic behind uh how white got to this position and i think white is still doing well and still has a lot of chances um so we'll see we'll see from here Uh, yeah, Sophie's playing very quickly. Um, I would doubt that this is still prep, but it, it very possibly could be. Um, I I think that they're just very comfortable with the position. Um, and also, I believe Sophie mainly plays either Blitz or Classical, and I think that that can be... It's tough to, to switch over to Rapid because... Um, rapid feels like you need to be blitzing, but you also have enough time that you should be playing more closely to uh, to classical, but not enough to fully play classical. So uh, King B1 was played, uh, moving the king out of the C file, where, as I was saying, uh, the C file could become dangerous after it, it opens up. Uh, so totally logical move there, King B1. Uh, I think anyone uh, could see themselves playing that in this position. Hey, Nordovic, uh, how are you doing? Uh, are you back from Vegas yet? Or are you hanging out in Vegas for a bit before returning home? Just got back. Great. All right. And I'm here now, by the way, Mitch. Oh, great. Welcome back. What did I miss? Catch me up. I see Sophie's uh, so playing we're still in the very first fast. Game. Yeah, Sophie's playing very quickly. Um, I feel that this is pretty comfortable for Black. Uh, however, those pawns on H4 and G5 are could become a, a threat. But uh, I, was, I was telling chat that I, I feel that with the queen on C2 and instead of in a more uh, aggressive position on the king side, uh, I feel that White's attack may not be there quite yet. I think there's still going to be some peace maneuvering before uh, we see any strong attack from from white whereas i think black's gonna try to rip open the c file and uh put their uh heavy pieces there and might have some some good chances from here yeah that definitely seems like a position that i'm always terrified to get in it just seems like that white's king <laughs> is gonna be blown open pretty quick if it if they can get if 
they can get through. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it does not feel like a Queen's Gambit declined whatsoever. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not used to uh, seeing a Queen's Gambit decline turn into this uh, almost Sicilian-looking position. Uh, not quite Sicilian because, of course, there's still a black sea pawn. Uh, but with the opposite color castling, with white barreling his uh, pawns down the board and black responding in kind on the queen side, it, it feels very Sicilian-esque. Do you, are you familiar with what Sophie normally plays? Is have you have you seen any of their games um, of what the, of what uh, Sophie normally does? I know that Sophie likes to play the Sicilian against e4. Uh, so I, I feel that they're pretty comfortable in this position. Uh, I've don't think I've ever seen Sophie play black against d4, or at least I haven't seen the start of the game anytime. Gotcha. They've played black against d4. Uh, Seth saying the QGD can get real. It's a very versatile opening. Yeah, I, I think that the QGD is like the E5 of of the uh, of the D4 games that it can uh, lead to some interesting games and uh, can be very different across the board uh, depending on how both players want to play it. Uh, I know Casa Corley came on and uh, has shown some really cool games to the U.S. Chess School on um, his aggressive system in the QGD. Uh, where there's a lot of uh, attacking involved. And that was really cool to see. I, anytime I try to play it, it doesn't end up like that. So um, that's, it, that's, it, that's it like one of the, that's one of the guy. openings. Like I've never even played because I don't know any, like the theory behind it, but I've, I keep having it on my list of like what I should try mm -hmm. next to try to mix it up and get a, get a more experience of different openings. So I think that's my goal is to try to get some kind of understanding about it next. Yeah, I it's on my list of things that I'm trying to learn. Uh, just even if I don't play it permanently, I think that uh, understanding of the Carlsbad structure is also just fundamental to chess. Um, so it's something that is on my list of things I want to play more uh, just to get used to it. I, I think that... So I played the Sicilian for a very long time and switching to E5, I think, was a big change for me in my understanding of chess. And... Uh, while I think E5 and the Sicilian are both fantastic openings, I think just playing very classical lines like E5 uh, really helps you develop in your chess, and I feel like that uh, really helped me grow. Um, so we've got... Uh, my name is Legion in the chat saying that Sophie typically plays the Queen's Indian uh, defense in the Queen's Gamut accepted most, but uh, that they, uh, she knows everything. Um, that's a that's a very so balanced Rusia game if, if Sophie can play everything. That's that's good to know everything, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, even uh, Cartier is asking um, what I play against D four, and I I am kind of the same way as Sophie, though I don't know everything, but I attempt to play everything. Um, I've experimented with a lot of things, uh, and it hasn't worked out very well for me. Um, <laughs> I am. A King's Indian player at heart, but um, the King's Indian doesn't love me back. And I, so I've been experimenting with other things since uh, I can't get my my love returned to me. So That's what I'm normally playing as the King's Indian. I'm not going to say I know everything about it or I know nothing about it, but I, I, I'm starting to learn some of the some of the deeper meanings behind everything because I didn't know what I was doing for the most part. Turns out I was playing it completely wrong. I was getting the position, but I didn't know what the strat what the middle game yeah. strategies were. Yeah, and I'm kind of the same way. Is if I can get the king side attack in the king's Indian, I feel fantastic, and I, I completely understand the attack that I'm going for. Uh, but if if white plays anything that prevents that, uh, so anything other than Mardel Plata essentially, uh, or, or or bayonet, like if they go for uh, the Karpov system with h3 and bishop e3, or they go for the same ish, or they go for uh, the Fianchetto lines, like I just feel completely squeezed. <laughs> um so definitely missing the understanding of the uh, of those uh, so we see a d takes c5 here and uh i'm expecting a bishop to take back on c5 and then 
Uh, eventually, Black will play D4, and I, I think we'll have a very comfortable game from there um, with the uh, center opening and the, the queen side opening. I think Black uh, would have a slight edge um, over, over White, though um, if White can maneuver uh, his king over to the king side, uh, Black could be facing some problems. Yeah, definitely. It definitely sees casual player. Sorry, what was that? Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just I was just looking at. I was just going to comment on something. But. Oh, gotcha. I was just looking at more of those white whites rooks. It looks like he's ready to make some kind of a push and an attack um, over on that side. So it seems like both sides could be kind of blown up if they're not careful. Yeah, totally agree. Um, I think that that's kind of why it feels a bit like a Sicilian. Um, that both sides are executing their attack and um, either one, um, whoever plays the ac more accurate attack will, will be better. Um, I think that the, yeah, the Rooks are definitely supporting the, the H and G pawn pushes. Um, I would like to see the queen get involved uh, for, for, uh, for white. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it totally feels like, they both have their opportunities here. Okay, so we see so, rook takes c5. Instead Sophie of went with the rook, which was my initial thought, too. You said bishop. Um, and my, in my gut, it was like, just attack with that rook, keeping yeah. uh, as the pin on the knight. Yeah, I, I can see both um, having their, their pros and cons to them. Uh, I, I definitely see why the rook is a logical choice. Uh, we can really pile up our heavy pieces there on the open c file. Uh, my idea behind the bishop was to be able to push d4 more easily because mm -hmm. um, I think that we want to get our light squared bishop eyeing on the, the king as well, uh, eyeing on b3 and a2. Um, so that was kind of my idea behind the bishop taking. But yeah, the, the rook taking on c5 keeps the knight pinned to the queen, allows for something like queen c7 and rook to c8 and uh, really piling up on that c file. Uh, we see white exit the pin here uh, with queen to d2. Um, that, was, that was the first move so, I, I considered too. I, I know it's nice to have that bishop lined up with that queen, but uh, I guess it was the lesser of the evil to just to try to get that pin unbroken. Yeah, yeah. And now um, d4 is even less enticing uh, for black because allowing the e pawn to move off of e3 would also give the queen a bit more scope onto the king side. Uh, so I think that this uh, is a very logical move from white. Uh, and of course, the queen couldn't go to somewhere like e2 because the knight just completely hangs at that point. Uh, mm -hmm. So to, to chat, that's why um, d2 was the, the choice square for, um, for white. All right, so here, um, black is probably going to look at something, I was going to say like queen c7, queen to b6, or queen a5, and queen a5 was the choice. Um, once again, pinning the... Uh, it's not quite pinned because the, the knight on f3... Yeah, because the knight covers the queen, it. So, yeah. So adding pressure to the knight, but the knight can't, can move. Um because the knight on f3 covers the queen. So here, um, yeah, I would definitely expect knight to e2 uh, is my my gut reaction to this, um, is, as long as white is okay with trading queens. Um, but I don't see another way to really defend the knight since there's two attackers on it. So knight e2 is played. Came out. So black has the, the choice between trading queens on... <laughs> <clears throat> pardon me um trading queens on d2 or um retreating the queen back um i don't know what what do you think uh you would do here um to me it just feels like the black king is doing more still to this point so i don't trading it feels like it might help white 
in, in my in <laughs> if you asked me a little while ago, I would just say I would just trade queens because you know I was at the point when you see a trade, just, you just trade. Just, that's just what happens. <laughs> now I'm starting to think about it, and it went, yeah. if I'm attacking, maybe I want to keep that queen. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'd say queen to b6 or c7 is probably where. Uh, Carte we'll does Sophie say trading queens next. does um, force that knight back to a worse square. Yeah, it does misplace the knight back to the d2, but um, black's attack is going to focus around pieces here. Uh, black is not going to easily be able to get any other pawns other than that a3 pawn uh, into white's camp. Uh, so I think that uh, since pieces are the most important thing to, to uh, Sophie, then I think that... Uh, keeping the queen on makes uh, a lot of sense. So here I'd be tempted to go queen to c7, uh, trying to make a battery on the c file. Mm -hmm. um, b6 also makes a lot of sense, though, um, putting it across from the king. And uh, they choose queen to b6. Makes sense. So here I'm getting the impression after the last few moves um i'm starting to like white a little bit more than i did before uh i felt that um i think that i mean i could be entirely wrong but i felt that bishop takes c5 and d4 was a a really strong plan to break open here for black but here i'm not seeing as easy of a plan to execute and i think white can just push h h5 here and, and really start to threaten um some kingside threats h5 and maybe eventually Placing that e knight on d4 or f4, and uh, then pl playing e4 at some point to get their king involved. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying. Because their queen involved. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because it seems like they've been like ready to to push on that push on the king side over there um, for white, mm -hmm. but they've been kind of distracted back on the on the queen side trying to handle all that. So now they might have an opening to start yeah. trying to make some kind of uh, an aggressive push. Uh, instead, we see knight f to d4. Uh, so that, that is one way to open up the f pawn to push if they feel uh, that the f pawn needs to be involved uh, in this attack. Uh, we see rook to c5 as the res or sorry, c7. rook from c5 to c7 as the response. And that was a that was a quick response. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the point of that was. Um, I was I was going to ask you because I don't understand it. So <laughs> I was going to ask you, do you see what the point of that was? Um, the knight wasn't really eyeing any forks uh, between the queen and and the in the rook. So I'm not sure. Makes room for the bishop what is the what Pemmons said. C7. Yeah, um, that is a point uh, that the bishop could come to c5. Um, the bishop comes to b4. Um, okay. So there's a pretty pretty big uh, time uh, time disadvantage now too because they have, they only have a two second increment. So it's yeah. So we're we're seeing uh, a little over two and a half minutes to seven minutes. So a uh, pretty big uh, four and a half minute discrepancy there thanks for the um, sub kj by the way yeah here uh i'm not sure what to think i i i do like sophie's recent moves i now that uh we see the bishop come to to b4 it makes sense why the rook to c7 was played and uh now uh, they're trying to improve their bishop to d7 and maybe get it to trade off on uh, the d3 bishop, so uh, that could be a thought. We could also see knight e6 to be played at some point, um, trying to get the knight involved. And uh, I was just going to say because that knight's been that knight's been knights. hanging out back there because it was sort of defending h7 when the queen was lined up, but now I don't think that's a threat anymore. So yeah. can Sophie start to to bring that knight into the game? It's a pretty long ways away from anything. Yeah, yeah. I think Sophie's gonna spend a little bit of time here to make sure that um, White doesn't have 
any immediate threats of pushing uh, their pawns and trying to get a, a win there. Uh, and then after, there you go. I was going to say after some thought, I would potentially uh, potentially go rook e to c8, doubling rooks on the c file. But knight ninety six was played. Uh, and here, uh, I'd say white probably. I'm not sure white could take it and then move the other knight to d4, or white could even play f5, and then. When black takes, just take back, and then we're still defending the F5 pawn pretty well. And thanks for the sub to everyone's favorite horse head enthusiast, Amandala. Yeah, thanks for the... All right, so we, we see uh, knight takes E6. Um, and now whichever heavy piece takes back on E6, the knight can come to D4 with tempo, and then... They probably just retreat back to whatever square they're currently on. So I think there's really no difference between queen takes e6 and rook takes e6 if we we go by that standpoint. Mm -hmm. That's what you're always going to be known to us now, Amanda. You're the horse head enthusiast. And the resident horse head champion. Did I did I miss uh, something in a Scrubs uh, or something? <laughs> of course. If it makes no sense, it was on a Scrubs episode. <laughs> Amanda, when Amanda was on, her she made a bet that the loser of the ter tournament had to buy this horse set off of Amazon and come on the next week and do a speech about knights. And oh. she ended up coming in last, so she <laughs> had to do it. And she, she's, she owned up to it. And she did it. That's great. Yeah, she only cares about the head of the horse, not the rest of it. <laughs> Sophie considering F takes E6. Um, I'd say F takes E6 is probably... Probably would be a mistake because I, I feel that we need both the H and the F pawns to watch over G6 um, for any future pushes. Also, a lot of times def uh, a defensive F5 will make sense. So, yeah, I think that we have to take back with a piece and then after knight D4, just retreat the piece back to where it was before. Um, so I expect rook E8 most likely. Because uh, I don't think D6 makes sense for the rook. So, yeah, I think rook E8. So... Essentially, yeah, it seemed... oh, my camera just gave out or something. It's, I was looking at mine too. Mine's been like flickering, so I think everyone's having uh, camera issues tonight. Sophie was trying to figure out her cam or their camera issues. Um, so it's just one of those nights. Yeah, I had that issue last night. My camera just kept dying, and then I had to reinsert it to OBS. It wouldn't let me just like unplug it and plug it back in. I had to remove the video capture and then reinsert it it was very frustrating yeah that's always fun when you're having to deal with the with the camera issue and then obs on top of it acting like a jerk i did it it just did it again yeah i forgot so amanda was out in uh vegas too so we have amanda and drew both this camera doesn't both in the chat out. that were out there i have a second camera so we'll see if i need to switch to that yeah, it looks like it might. All right, so white is down to 40 seconds now. It might. I'd be concerned. Maybe they're calmer than I am. Is Atulia good at a uh, bullet? I did not look at either of their games beforehand. So I'm actually not familiar with. Atulia did say he doesn't play a lot of rapid on this account, I think. So I'm not even sure what. His rapid rating is 22, so he is I'll good. I'll be right back. I'm switching cameras. Yeah, no worries. So he's good, not brilliant. I t I'll, I'll take good. So we got an F-pawn push. So White is finally making that push. Down to 18.6 seconds left, though. All right. Let's see if I can get this camera to work. 
This is the this is the camera that gave the the strobe light party the one time. So I was trying not to <laughs> use it. But. Yeah, see, my, my camera keeps flickering too. I'll restart my All camera, right. but I'll wait for you yeah. to come back. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What um, happens if I so we them? we see um, F five played white down to less than twenty seconds. Personally, when I get less than a minute, I start to to play worse. Uh, I start freaking out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so Amanda was in, in um, Vegas. Also, went two out of six both days. Is that I'm close enough for you? Class. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Every time I like, I start up the camera software, it gets right up on my forehead. I don't know why. It can back up some. It doesn't have to be just like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Amanda. Hey, Amanda, glad, glad that you had fun uh, in Vegas. Did you do anything other than the tournament or just hang out with the Dojo Wears? Yeah, so I saw one group photo. Um, I don't know if you were in there, Amanda. I saw Drew and then a bunch of other people, maybe. Drew was the only face I knew, <laughs> besides Kosti and David, of course. And uh, was it? What's his name? Aaron, Aaron Hawaii or whatever his name was. Yeah. Yeah, I saw Aaron in there. Um, all right, so we see Bishop D6 threatening the Rook. Uh, so Rook probably has to go back to G2 or maybe to F3. Um, F3 is F3, Rook, it is. F3 is played. Down to 11 seconds. Yeah, it was a great group photo. I mean, we really wish I had been there, but uh, I wasn't sure with everything going on um, in advance uh, if I should uh, plan for the tournament because my, my wife's due in less than a month now. So so I, I, I knew she I, I missed it uh, last night. I knew so less than a month. So it's coming up. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, coming up real fast. <laughs> and it comes quicker and quicker once you get closer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Are you guys all set up? Are you guys all ready? Got the kids' room all ready to go? Yeah, so we've got the um, the nursery set up. Um, and uh, uh, wait, uh, I think that Black's winning here with Rook takes B3, right? Uh, maybe the king gets out. Maybe the king gets out. I would think, but he, but you still have that dark squared bishop that can swing in at the end too. So at least you got him running. Yeah, yeah. So rook takes, pawn takes, queen takes, king to c one, bishop to c three. Are we mating there? She's down to or there. Uh, Sophie's down to thirty four seconds. So they're gonna come up with something quick. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, well, the nursery is all set up. Uh, everything I believe is ready. We have like the diaper bag packed, uh, that kind of stuff. Okay, so Bishop A4 was played. Uh, they weren't quite confident, and the Rook takes B3 and couldn't didn't feel they could calculate it in the in the 30 seconds they had, and Whew. decided to save some time. Now, uh, do you just go ahead and take that pawn and blow it up? Oh, Brit swinging the Rook over. Yeah, okay. I, would, I was gonna say take it with the take with the bishop and just bring the queen in, but this works too. Uh, the bishop could not come to c3 there because the rook's on c3. So, um, okay, we see. Yeah, we, now we got the time scramble going on. Okay. on that, yeah, now now they're both going to be playing on increment. Yeah. Um, that might have, feels like that gave the king some room. Got to be careful back rank. Yeah, here... Ooh. Oh, here I I feel like um something just went wrong there for for black. I feel white can yeah. get, get in pretty quickly here now. And now um black's down in exchange and is threatening mate. Um and now yeah. Uh if the bishop ever leaves the I think uh, this Yeah, is... now um I don't think <sighs> can Okay, so we drop a bishop in order to not lose to the back rank and ah, ooh, unfortunately time, time pressure time scramble scramble yeah. there so he is pretty good at bullet then because he was able to work that work through that it was pretty even right up until the very end right there oh man 
Yeah, that time <laughs> scramble. That, that, was, was intense. that was intense. Yeah, I I got completely thrown by the opening and used so much time. I was not expecting that to work out at the end. So, and chat was asking, do you play a lot of bullet? Yeah, are you are you good under, are you good under time? I mean, yeah, clearly. I'm far better under time pressure than with time, apparently. Because yes, yeah, so, somehow that game started. Sophie got out to a pretty huge time advantage on you, and then was just trying to figure it out. I think late. I've then, never seen a five, a four, a three before. Like that was very clever. Normally, people blunder. If you go back one move instead of a three, people will play b five, and then white's like almost winning if played improperly like blacks under a lot of pressure i've never seen a3 before yeah i felt that this was in a very interesting opening i've never seen anything quite like it uh where we kind of feel like a sicilian in a, in a queen's gambit instead um where uh white is really throwing everything on the, the king's side and black uh, likewise on the queen's side uh, so it's very interesting and very fun attacking chess um, Sophie, are you in audio now? Yep, I am. <laughs> that happens to me so much. Like, I remember another game that I played that was like from a tournament that was fifteen plus two, where it was like super similar. I had I was almost like checkmating, and then like I was I had no time, and like I just hung everything, and like I ended up drawing. So I don't know. Like I remember something like super similar happening to me. So like. I just, I don't know. I just, I really should just try to practice avoiding that, I guess. Do you, yeah, do you ever pressure is really tough. Do you play a lot of blitz or bullet or anything, Sophie, or do you strictly kind of stick to the longer time controls? Yeah. I like work way too hard on my blitz. Like, <laughs> so I, I just hope, I hope it pays off one of these days. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, here I felt black was completely crushing, and I thought that rook takes b3 works, uh, but yeah. I, couldn't, I, I know that you were really low on time, so it's a little hard to figure out for sure if it works. Uh, yeah, I calculated that, and then I calculated bishop c3, but um, I just, like, my brain was smooth, so... If it makes yeah. you feel any better, I didn't see bishop c3. I thought I was surviving this one, too. Bishop c3 is a dope move. Yeah, so no, like I don't know, I I wasn't I couldn't calculate. I was like the queen moves, and then like I don't know, but a two just probably. wins. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. I, Unfortunate, I don't know. but yeah. uh, that, it, that's time trouble for you, right? And then yeah, uh, yeah the time trouble, uh, both mutual time trouble, both getting down to just increment, and uh, um, Natalia playing it very well to to come back for that win. That was very undeserved. Oh, apologies <laughs> again. That back rank, all the time. <laughs> that back rank really screwed you over at the end. Yeah. Well, great. Um, I don't know. If you guys want to do, is there anything in the game that you want to talk about, or you want to get into the next one, or need a break, or anything I, like that? I had a question actually. Like, I used a bunch of time because, what was your, like. Was that the attack you were going for the whole time? Because I didn't spot it until it was like already in front of me. Because like the move rookie six threw me like for a loop when you took it. I thought you were gonna take with the bishop for sure. And then when you took with the rook, I was like very confused. I like discarded bishop takes because f5 okay. comes with tempo. Yeah, that's fair. I, I was just, I didn't want to give e3. I thought if I give e3, the game just ends. Mm hmm. So. I, w I don't think I was ever going to touch my F pawn. Well, until like two moves later, and then I panicked. Oh, man. Yeah. It was a rough game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, a question in chat of why rook takes c5 instead of bishop takes c5, I think is the question. I was um, not queen e2 on bishop takes c5. And I actually yeah, liked my probably. position. Okay. Probably that's why, because yeah, I just I don't want to give the queen like more options for what yeah. it moves. Makes a, a lot of sense. Um. Yeah. Uh. I'm just gonna be right back, like really, really quickly. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Oh. 
Oh man, I I had no business. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we I saw have... kind of that attack right at the end, and we thought we thought Black had it, but Mitch was trying to calculate, and I'm way slower, so I was trying to calculate it. I couldn't I couldn't tell if it worked in time because <laughs> it was yeah. just, it was going to be a, it was a hard thing for me to try to calculate whether it worked. I just saw Black had background weaknesses, so I was like, maybe I can try for a swindle. That's what I, at, at one point, point I thought I was like, as long as Sophie sees the back crank, because it was I saw a threat that could have popped up really quickly in that scramble. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really tough in the scramble for sure. Totally understandable how how it turned out. Uh, when you've got personally, when I have less than a minute, like every move I make is a massive blunder. So <laughs> the fact that uh, it was it wasn't until you're down below like five seconds that there was anything uh, any. Incorrect yeah. moves. Should have just played Bishop A4 faster because it was like the first move that came to mind. I was like, I, like I should have just been like, I can't. I'm not. I know I'm not gonna be able to calculate where it takes B3. So like, mm -hmm. I I should just play Bishop A4 immediately instead. Yeah. Just trust yourself. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. <laughs> but totally understandable. Um, if you want to send a rematch uh, or. Um, yeah. Well, we yeah, I think we're gonna get started. Okay, great. Get game two on the road. All right. Good luck. All right. So we see an E4 game uh, in game two. Um, so we'll see what. Uh, so, uh, like his name says, uh, he's going to play the Cairo Khan. Uh, we see an advanced variation. Um, you got to live up to your name. You can't let it down there. Let me refresh chat to make sure that. I didn't lose anything. I haven't seen anyone say anything in a while, but okay, I guess I don't no think one said so. anything in a anytime I, I don't see like, you know, at least one per minute, I, I worry yeah. that what you guys don't want to talk to us? Something. <laughs> We're just yeah. saying everything you're thinking, you have no questions. Come on, Cartier, I know you got something right. out there. <laughs> so we see an advanced variation with the typical H four ideas and bishop to D three trading off the the bishop and um Fujio comes in on G5, and I think that this is pretty much all theory. Um, knight to F5 is played. Uh, the knight is kind of hanging, though. If we go knight takes D5, I think that we pick up the F5 knight, and uh, we're right back. So I think the knight takes D5 just wins a pawn. Is it, um, is it too risky for them to then take the B pawn, with black to take the B pawn at the end of that? Does that not work? So knight takes d5, e takes d, or sorry, knight takes d5, e takes d5, queen takes on f5, and then you're saying queen takes. Uh, yeah, does that d2? not work? Uh, to regain the pawn. Uh, well, definitely I think doesn't. That matter. we would play rook to b2 or, or b1, and then after the queen takes on a2, take out the b7 uh, oh, okay. pawn, and I think our our rook feels nicer in their position than the than the That's queen feels in ours. Um, so instead, we saw a castle, and now g six prevents any knight takes d five ideas. Yeah, Rosenberg, it got into a mad time scramble at the end, and uh, Sophie had had a possible attack to try to try to get it, but uh, she wasn't able to calculate it. She had just had no time left, so. Yeah, it was definitely a big time scramble. It was uh, pretty insane that I saw it get down uh, almost to, to zero at, at one point. So they were both playing on the on the two second increment, which is uh, not enough to, to really think. Yeah. It's only enough to, to move the mouse immediately. <laughs> Atulia was moving fast because didn't he have like 30 seconds back on his clock at the end of it or something? So he, he was blitzing out. Yeah, fast. yeah, it was. Sophie was down to like two seconds. He got so. down to, yeah, he got down to less than five, but he ended with more than thirty. So, I, yeah, I thought he was going to um, flag at the one definitely. point because it got down below two, I think, for one of the moves. Yeah, and then he just went loco. Definitely comfortable in bullet positions, it seemed. Mm -hmm. All right, so now things have calmed so down here, a little bit. Uh, we see Rook A is one. Yeah, and after G6, uh, Black's position is really well held together. Uh, and I think he can feel a bit more comfortable 
uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, after the game if either player considered rook d5 or sorry uh, knight to d5 or if it was just um uh missed by both i only saw it because of the in costa's game um his one king's indian game against uh Glidora, uh that was a a threat that came up quite a few times where oh, okay. Glidora could give up the uh take take a pawn with the the knight and leave the other knight undefended so yeah those are those are tricks for me i don't i don't spot those <laughs> i can never when you like you just take the pawn it, it's it <laughs> Looking like you're losing a piece, but then winning it back. That, that, those are some tactics I need to I need to practice because I can never spot those. Yeah, it's it's one of those that until you've you've seen it executed, you kind of miss it up until then, and then mm-hmm. uh, occasionally you'll see it again. Uh, uh, Chess gains. Uh, Max is saying only two second increments is tough. Uh, barely, uh, I can barely make accurate moves even with ten. Yeah, <laughs> and I. Even if I have thirty second increment, if I get down below a minute, I just start to panic, and uh, I, I I know that thirty seconds is typically enough in the positions that I, I get into in that time scramble, but it's it's just I psychologically it, it's too tough for me. Yeah, I need to go back and look through uh, or finish watching all of uh, Kostya's uh, game reviews. I've only, I only was able to watch like one or two of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I've this. watched all the ones that he's posted on YouTube, and they've all been really great. And then, of course, the ones that we all watched together, I was mm-hmm. there for it to get to get chat thoughts. But I'd still like to hear Kostya's thoughts, uh, especially on his most recent game. Um, I felt it was a, a little uh, a little rough for him, but at that uh, it was still it would still be great to see what his thoughts were because I kind of got the uh, impression that he was spending so much time because he felt that he had to like crush uh black for um maybe a perceived inaccuracy in his play and then i think instead um got too much time trouble because of that uh steve nash's 20 minute workout is uh my filing cabinet intentionally colored like a chessboard yeah so you've got the the gray uh kind of looks white and then uh the the black other ones uh and lay uh offset to kind of look a bit like squares so uh, mm. uh, kind of kind of tried for that but not not specifically chess intentional but uh, go all out stylistic. get two more stack them on top and then get a, a whole nother <laughs> set you gotta you gotta have the full 64 yeah Yeah, were you able to? I know that a lot of times you were in in the background uh, while I was streaming. Were, um, but did you end up going to bed for most of the the games, or how how much did you usually stay up for? Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I you'll you'll soon learn. My kids like to get up super early, so my late nights <laughs> are kind of done for. So I was able to stay up for like for yeah. part of them, and then yeah, I'd normally by like uh, ten or eleven, I'd, I'm like I'm out. I gotta go to bed. <laughs> Cause I got one, yeah. one that still yeah, sleeps I, in the bed with us and kicks me all night. So I haven't had a good night's sleep in like three <laughs> and a half years. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I really appreciate that over the weekend, they shifted it by two hours uh, forward. So that way it wasn't up past midnight to, yeah. to, to stream the games. That's nice. Yeah. Cause you had, you had messaged me at like one thirty or something like that, that one morning. <laughs> I was like, Phew. yeah. Cause are you, Oh, you, I, are you on the, you're game, on the east coast i was i'm a, i'm in central i'm in uh, st louis oh okay gotcha so uh w- w- one hour behind you gotcha um but i i grew up on the east coast so i still sometimes talk in east coast times i, oh, I, gotcha. I feel it's easier to say that than central because uh-huh. like I, I i just go with one of the coasts because then everyone knows oh i'm two hours behind east coast or i'm mm-hmm. an hour ahead of what west coast. one's like oh i'm an hour behind central you know <laughs> like uh it's hard to hard to say times in the in central yeah i'm not, I'm not used to working with people from well, california so i always like got a central european oh yeah yeah oh, sorry go ahead 
Oh, no, I was like, I was like, I'm not used to working with like people in California. So now that I'm like talking to Kostya and David and everything like that, I'm trying to schedule stuff. And they're like, oh, it's going to start at two. And I'm like, wait, no, that's at five. I'm like, wait, that's dinner time. So I'm trying to I'm trying to work through all that. Time zones are hard. Yeah. Yeah, they, they really are. Um, yeah, I, uh, I've i worked for Cigna now for uh, two and a half years. And uh, oh, okay. everything is East Coast time because that's where they're headquartered. Uh, so anytime like a meeting is scheduled, I uh, especially on my last team, I always had the problem of uh, they would schedule a meeting every single day during my lunchtime. So I had to ju- I had to just always eat an hour earlier than I'm used to. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, well five. Uh, yeah, when you hold have- on. Now they're yelling at me about dinner time. Yes, it didn't used to be dinner time, but you tried telling two little toddlers that start screaming at five o'clock that they're ready for dinner. And then they go to bed at like seven. So yeah, they they're we've moved dinner time at not five five thirty is when we eat now. Yeah, because they act like they're dying if they don't eat by then. Yeah. All right. Um. Back to the game. Let's see. Um. White has now tried to place uh double their rooks on the C file and then has placed their knight onto G five. Um. Trying to potentially get an attack over there on the king. Uh, but with only the knight over there, it's going to be a little tough. Um, so I doubt we'll see any explosives quite yet on the king side. Um, instead, I think that we'll see the place focused around this uh, open C file. Yeah, these, these are the um, positions where I get to, and if, if I'm white, I, I'm like stuck, and I don't know what to do. Uh I know the action's over on the C file, but it, like, what's the best move? Yeah, I agree. I um, whenever I get to a position where I don't have a clear way to make an attack, it's a little harder for me to decide what what I'm doing. Uh, I think that's a, a clear weakness in my play. Is uh, if the king is not under threat, I don't know what I'm doing. So. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> But I think that comes from the nature of the the openings I've always preferred are like the the King's Indian and the the Marshal now, uh, and then the Sicilian, uh, both Dragon and Accelerated Dragon before. So everything is an attack on the King, uh, and uh, so when uh, something is like here, where we're focused on the positional idea of an, uh, of controlling the C file, it's a little harder. Knight h3, f4 right, so. is more patient. Yeah, so knight h3 to f4. Uh, the knight probably would like the f4 square. Uh, so that's a, a good call out from uh, E. Rosenberg in chat. Um, knight a4 was played here. <coughs> and uh, so the queen is under threat, but then also. Um, threats of taking the uh, the rook. Um, I think that it's always tough for me to say, um, but I think we're good here to take the rook on c2 in Hermeso, Um because if the queen, or if the knight takes the queen, we get a second rook. Uh, so we get two rooks and a knight then, because it comes with check. Uh, so we get two rooks and a knight for the queen. So oh, okay. I think rook takes c2 is. Find hmm, insert that's here and uh, space to that. That's what he's going for. Um, so probably here the rook will take back, and then the queen will find a new home, uh, either on a five or d eight. Uh, and queen comes to a five. Um, yeah, he's, he Rosenberg. I probably would have gotten queen d eight also. Um, so rook c2 and then queen d8 uh, was what he was saying. Uh, instead, we see queen a5. Uh, and now probably the knight has to move. So probably to c5, unless white wants to keep both uh, knights on the board, in which case they would play to c3. Um, so chess gains says, uh, maybe he, he wanted, um, the reason why queen a5 was after knight c5, knight takes 
Rook takes queen e1 can be played. Uh, e. Rosenberg is saying b3 here. That's that is another way to protect a knight. Either b3 or um, yeah, I'd say b3, knight c5, knight c3 are probably my top candidate moves. Uh, I'm not sure if I would go queen to b3. Yeah, that, that was a move I was looking at, but I didn't think it really did much for you. Yeah, after queen to b3, there's queen e1 check. Um, I mean, there's still queen e1 check. If we go b3... Um, <laughs> so queen e1, king goes to h2... Then what, though? F2 is defended, so there's not really much going on. Uh, I think uh, knight probably to F5 mm -hmm. and trying to get in that way. But does it feel weird to have our queen all the way on E1? That was my concern with that check is it's kind of far into enemy territory. Yeah, and E. Rosenberg pointing out that if the queen remains on d3 instead of going to b3, at least the queen can come back to f1 uh, mm -hmm. to block the check instead of the king coming to h2. Instead, we see the knights traded on c5, the rook takes, and then... That's, pro that's probably where here, I would have gone. We see queen e1, or... Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I think knight c5 was what jumped out to me but um here we might see queen e1 or we will see queen d8 uh or maybe queen to b6 but um those are the two squares i put on is e1 or d8 but i still don't or, or here now that the rook has come off the c file i think that um now white has to play queen f1 um so here we'll we'll see the queens traded and then this resulting endgame of one rook and one knight apiece, um, white's pieces are placed um, further up the board. Uh, so that space advantage could potentially favor white in this endgame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree, E. Rosenberg, that um, queen trade favor favors white here. Um, yeah, since the box queen's the only active piece. Let's yeah, get rid so of it. Instead, instead what uh, I guess queen to d2 is the only other square it can go to, right? Um, every other square is protected by another piece. So queen to d2. So I guess the question is, is the queen active or is the queen uh, feeling trapped if it has to go to d2? Uh, it's not It's not trapped trapped, but mm -hmm. uh, it definitely, it definitely feels squares. awkward. Like it's just kind of hanging out by itself and not really sure what it's what's gonna what its goal is mm -hmm. queen d2 rook c7 mm -hmm. yeah and i guess um if we trade and then go knight c6 we force white to retreat their knight back to f3 to defend the d pawn so i guess our knight at least gets slightly active um and we make white excuse me um white retreat their knight a bit um but then where is our rook going um e. rosenberg is saying if queen d2 then rook c7 uh, but then 1800 straight said if queen d2 rook c7 uh, rook c8 just to get we, we see the queen trade anyway yeah he, 
So I think he was just kind of calculating all that and couldn't didn't see any benefit to any of it. So here, either knight c6. Excuse me, I don't know why I'm yawning. Um, either knight c6 or rook to c8. Uh, if rook c8 and rook takes c8 and knight takes c8, then our knight isn't feeling all that great on c8, but at least we get rid of white's really active rook. Uh, on knight c6, knight f3, and at least we've kind of made our knight feel a little better, but then where's our rook ever coming in? And he'll uh, play 96 96. was played. Yeah, they're saying I guess so. Like... Sorry, go ahead. No, I was, I was, it was, uh, was it, uh, Tali was saying this looks really good for white, and then 18 hunches, this looks really even because I was reading it as it feels kind of even. So it's just funny. I was like, they yeah, were... I. Each said something, and then different. E. Rosenberg follows up with black, maybe a little better. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, lots of different thoughts in chat. We have all three opinions, so this could be a all three results could happen. <laughs> uh, it's either it's either really good for white, would, really good for black, or it's dead even. It's got to be one of those, right? Well, I guess it doesn't have to be really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's probably very close to equal, uh, where white might be slightly, slightly, slightly favored, but like at most like plus point point one five, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So equal. Yeah, Tyler, I don't know a lot about chess, but I know that there's only three possible outcomes. I do know that much, so. <laughs> so the knight or the the kings get activated a bit more um it's almost like they're waiting to see who's go, who's gonna make the move who's whose knight is going where and yeah all right looks waiting like, each other uh, out Atulia is going for an f6 push um to try to get the the rook activated on a, on a separate file than the white rook um so what will we see white do in response potentially moving move the knight and play f4 could be a thought just try to lock down that side and prevent that push knight e1 d3 c5 yeah the knight would be well placed on c5 for sure Knight G5 could stop the F6 okay, pawn hundreds. push, though. Yeah. Uh, B2 to B4, stop Knight A5 to C4. Yeah, I think that that would be some great prophylaxis to prevent that. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that does kind of seem to kill that uh, Black Knight. It doesn't really have much room to do anything at that point. Yeah, I, I guess if if the pawn comes to b4, maybe the knight can look for an outpost on b5 instead with knight a7 to b5. Uh, but that does feel a little okay. slow. And also, uh, also knight a, a, a7 right after b4 would be a, uh, a blunder to rook c7 check. But uh, maybe the king will come over to d7 first before doing that. Gotcha. Definitely one where um, four minutes is not going to be enough to <laughs> think about every strategic facet of this position. Mm -hmm. And I don't yeah, think this they're going to just entirely different than the first game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I don't think they're all both just going to sit and wait for the four minutes to go down. It seems like, and just get into a mad time scramble. It seems like somebody's going to do something. 
All right, so F a uh, king F four was played. Um, so I'm expecting Atulia to go F six was kind of what Rook F eight seemed to be implying. Mm-hmm. Um, so what is the idea of king F four in that case? Is the king just, coming to G five? That's my first thought. I was like, I, I feel like that's the only place that makes any sense to get it to G five. Yeah, maybe the the thought is if um. F6 E takes if rook takes with check our king is coming to G5 and um so instead maybe the king has to take back on F6 to prevent the king from coming to G5 and then we're we're, we're blocking our own um half open file that we just created. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, there exactly you go. The king takes. Kind of shut down that plan. All right, so now of course there's the the usual geometry of the king and rook on a uh, fork on h7 if uh-huh. um, white tries to go for that. But of course, that's easily blocked by black. Uh, so we see rook e3. Uh, so maybe piling up on the e pawn with the. Uh, now knight g5 both threatens the um the with fork the threat on of the H7 fork and as then well the as the, pawn. the next pawn. Yeah, so black has to do something now to either split up the geometry or reinforce the e pawn. Um so that way the next threat isn't a threat from both ends. Yeah, so it's being pointed out in chat, the king g7 forces king to g3. Um, if the king were to come into g5, we have, I believe, mate on f5 with the rook. Um, so that's a, a nice spot there. That would be nasty to fall into that. Yeah, so we didn't see that. Instead, we see a5. Um, so a5 kind of self-imposes um, the the inability for black to play knight a5, knight to c3, mm-hmm. or knight to c4, sorry. Um, yeah, I'd say that it's still probably pretty, pretty equal, um, but white is trying for the win, it seems. It's a time situation. Okay, that's pretty close. All right. B three was played by White, and um, shutting down A four uh, was probably the intention there. Although you know, in a lot of these situations, you can just go A four anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, give up the pawn and then play against the doubled pawns because there's no way for White to defend A four. Um, so a4, b takes a4, and rook a8. Yeah, and they're starting to get a little low on time. Um, definitely not yeah, going to be able to calculate all possibilities here. Yeah, maybe I lied. I thought they weren't going to let that happen again, but it's... Shaping up like it could. So we see rook c8 uh, inviting white to come back uh, rook to c3. Um, Yeah, I don't know where the push is. I think it is going to come down to that. I think neither one of them knows knows how to break through it in the best way, I guess. Because I sure don't. Um, <laughs> so to Gritty, I'm not understanding Rook to G5. I, I don't see how a Rook can get to G5. 
All right, so Black trying to, I guess, potentially repeat, and uh, we see White accepting that repetition. No, we're gonna see it. Forced to do it all the time, all three times. Are we gonna see it? Uh, here, White has some extra time to think. Yeah, uh, and des- decides to go for the repetition. Totally understandable there. I, I think that it was a pretty drawn position. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that they can both be pretty happy with the draw. Yeah. You all both, you all both happy with that draw? <laughs> I mean, I butchered the yeah. opening again. I'm all right with had, it. I think you had knight takes yeah. d5. I, I knight f5. saw that, but oh my god. I was just really lazy. I saw knight takes d5. I was just terrified. I, I, I did see it. I just was like, I there's checks, and I'm not castled, and I don't want to calculate anything. I'm just <laughs> that is, a, I yeah, should not minutes. do that. I, 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 know, I saw it I, as soon as I played it, and I was like, what have I done? Because I know I'm not supposed <laughs> to play this move order because this happens. Oh, oh my god, this is this is terrible. It's like I, I, I saw it. The, the worst parts, I saw it, but I just I was like lazy and didn't want to do calculation. <laughs> Chat says mood. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a, that was a it was a good learning experience for me because I those I was saying those are the kind of tactics I don't see. Mitch pointed that out to me, so I, I learned something. It was a common I'm sure I did the, too. In the game <laughs> uh, of Glidora versus Kostya uh, on Friday, where quite a few times Glidora threatened this kind of position where the the knight can take a pawn and. White can recapture the other knight. So, um, but yeah, I, I agree that there's there's still complications to be had after this. After knight takes d5, he takes queen takes, and then there, there's maybe a bishop check. Maybe the maybe the queen's taking the pawn or or throwing in a check first. Uh, uh, it's hard to say. So definitely stuff to calculate other than just the simple tactic that is there. Uh, so I understand Sophie, you not wanting to get too deep into the calculations there. Um, but, but yeah, I my only suggestion is when you have fifteen minutes, consider consider the calculation. But, uh, <laughs> totally understandable. St- still yeah. a, a comfortable draw either way. Um, mm-hmm. I felt the game was pretty pretty equal, um, and totally understand the repetition there. I, I there wasn't much to be had there in that night and uh, rook end game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there anything else we should look at or just like want to move on to the next game? I'm down to play the next. Yeah, sure, okay. let's do it. All right. Good luck to both Run players. Back. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. All right, what do you think we're gonna see this this time? We're gonna see another game like that or another crazy game like the first one. So Atulia will have white again. I'm Expecting that he most likely plays d4 all the time. Um, I, and especially after, although it wasn't really a comfortable win that he got in the first game, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm not sure if he'll want to repeat the same type of game. Uh, we see d4, but we already see Sophie deviate into a Nimzo instead of a Queen's game declined. All right, so both players clearly they know what know they're, they're doing here. here and are making <laughs> extremely quick moves. It's always fun to, fun to watch uh, people who tend to play faster time controls play play the opening because mm-hmm. it's just crazy fast. Yeah. It's funny they just go bam, 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 and then it just and then it just kind of calms down. Everyone takes a deep breath, and then then they like settle into the game. Yeah. So this is where the trustable course ended, or something like that. Or... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which you are the trustable it. king, right? How many how many variations do you have on there? I think you posted something where you had like how many thousands of variations on one thing that you were working on. Yeah, I constantly have a lot of reviews. Uh, I used to get it down to zero all the time, uh, but as soon as I let it go, it it got insane. Uh, I have like a back up to like sixteen thousand uh, to review. <laughs> sixteen thousand. It it was it was crazy. Um, 
because pretty much all of Gustafsson's course came came up to review around the same time. Um, so uh-huh. it was just when I when I let it go, especially uh, I spent the uh, first three or four months of uh, this year preparing for an exam instead of playing too much chess. And mm-hmm. um, once I kind of let my chess will go, it got insane. I got it back down to like 8,000 and then um, – <laughs> And I started learning new lines and other courses, and now it's all the way back up to like sixteen thousand or so. Man, mine hits so. <laughs> like two hundred and fifty or three hundred, and I start panicking. And I'm like, I gotta get it down. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you this: How many unread email I- notifications do you have on your phone? Is that something too that you just like escalate, let escalate, and just get completely out of control? On, or do you, are you someone that has like fifteen thousand unread emails? No, I'm at zero. Okay, good. I read all my emails. I was curious if like all of it, if everything like that, like just kind of just snowballs and gets out of control. Because I have friends and they have like some insane number of unread emails, and it just drives me crazy. Like, yeah, you just can't let it get crazy. to that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's like what I'm feeling. I've let it get to that point uh, with Chessable, and it feels real, real tough. Um, and that's with a lot of paused courses, like. All of mm-hmm. my, I imported all of uh, what I have in, uh, of Negi, and uh, all of those are paused. I'm only focusing on Black right now because I'm not not sure if I still want to play E4 or if I want to play D4. Um, so all of that's paused. All of my D4 <laughs> books are paused. It's just right now like a few Black courses, um, <laughs> almost entirely Gustafsson's course. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so what are we looking at here? Is this pretty typical coming out of the Nimzo Indian? Uh, so I'll be honest, I don't know the Nimzo very well. Um, it's one of those openings where, like, I didn't give it a lot of, of a chance uh, when I tried to learn it myself. I just felt that it wasn't my style of opening and kind of gave up on it pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, and then with me not really playing it as white either, um, I don't know how typical this is. Uh, I see that Black still has the dark squared bishop. Um, so uh, there was not a trade on c3. I think we had a, a queen c2 nimzo. Yeah, we had a queen c2 nimzo. So a lot of times um, Black is discouraged to take the knight because uh, it's not um, coming with the compensation of the pawn structure uh, when we do that. So. Tyler, you're an email GM, so you must have it. Uh, you're not one of the people with like 12,000 yeah. unread emails, and good. So D5 was played here. Yeah, Tali has a zero, as it should be. Good job. I'm going to check mine right now and make sure I haven't gotten a couple. <laughs> So D5, I think, is a very um, typical break uh, in the the name. So trying to um, get get some space and challenge the center that White has built up. So, uh oh, Seth, are you? Do you have thousands of unread emails? You got to unsubscribe to those. <laughs> Yeah, the D5 break came before castling, so that's slightly surprising, especially with the the white queen being developed as well. So Mm -hmm. could be a little scary. That's one thing I always I always tend to. I think it should be fine. I always tend to be like an early castler. I just try to get I just try to get it out of the way and then blow blow it up. Yeah. Um yeah, I agree. I think castling early tends to be pretty uh, it's on my table as well or on the table for me as well. Um but depending on the the opening, I sometimes leave it a few more moves in case I decide to queenside castle. Mm-hmm. Particularly as white as black, I, I I think as black I almost always castle pretty quickly. Um But yeah, so D5 was played Putting Atulia into a, a think here, 
I think that uh, it makes sense because he probably is trying to look and see, is there a way that breaking this open uh, will favor me uh, and will allow me to get an attack on that king? Uh, however, it's important to note that all of the E squares that the queen can go to, so E3 and E4, are covered by black pieces, right? So because of that... Um, I just realized that if I'm sharing my screen, maybe I shouldn't draw too many arrows. If I, I don't know if they'll they'll see them. Uh, they yeah. probably have it. Maybe they're, maybe they're locked in. They won't won't even see it. I don't know if they're looking at it. Yeah. Um. But because of the, uh, those squares are guarded by black pieces, uh, there's not quite as many threats on the on the king uh, across the e file. Mm -hmm. So I think that black is feeling okay. I think that this d5 push was still well timed because of that they're both taking they're both taking it pretty serious because they both spent some serious time on that last move each so sophie took a minute and 30 yeah, seconds playing. and then he took three minutes yeah so yeah, they're not taking it lightly pawn breaks are are probably the most thought about um things in chess right they're very complicated uh so whenever you attempt to pull one off you spend a lot of time on it and if your opponent didn't foresee it coming i think that they'll spend a lot more time on it as well um a lot of piece captures and whatnot are pretty quick to to calculate uh but i i feel like when pawns are involved uh, it becomes it takes a lot more time to think about it that is true because yeah once you once you make that break there's no going back <laughs> with the pawns once you push them so yeah yeah, pawns are the the only piece that can't move backward. So yeah, I feel like I need to start taking pawn structures a little bit more serious, especially if anyone follows Neil Bruce and he, he's always been posting that. I think he was going through <laughs> one of those uh, pawn structure books. Need to need need to try to like yeah, uh, brush um, up on my pawn structures a little bit. Definitely, definitely recommend Flores Rios's book, um, mm -hmm. Chess Structures. Uh, that is a fantastic book that really was transformative for me. Um, it doesn't cover it. It mainly focuses on pawn structures out of the opening. Uh, so it's not like, like other books where it says, Oh, this is the hanging pawn structure here. Are the ideas behind it, but kind of like this opening, we will see this structure and here are white and blacks ideas in this opening because of the structure. And I think that's very good. Um, Although I did skip over some of some of it because I didn't th find those openings uh, relevant to me, but I still I want to I want to go back and read it again and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of have all of the ideas in my head so that I can use them uh, in my own games. I know I've I've always heard that I need to I need right. to check out that book too because it's yeah pawn structure is something I just kind of ignore and then I get into some terrible structure and I don't know how to play it or just completely losing structure <laughs> and so. I need I need to put yeah. that on my uh, ever growing list of books that I'll <laughs> start to read. <laughs> like everyone never finishes. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Here instead of e takes d five like white played, I was really considering e five, uh, leaving black with the IQP, uh, especially since we we're talking about pawn structures. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I think that's why it came to my mind. Uh, with the IQP on d five, I felt that. Uh, white would be feeling pretty good although i'm pretty biased i don't like playing with an iqp so because of that i i feel really good when my opponent has it and uh and honestly there's pros and cons to the iqp it's not like the iqp is truly a weakness or anything like that but i've always felt that i can't really play with it all that well so because of that uh, i treat it as though it's a weakness and it truly isn't a complete weakness but um some something that white could have thought about there at least yeah sue strain is saying but opening the bishops looks really scary so once you kind of blow that up and those two bishops are eyeing all the way across the board that does look pretty pretty frightening yeah i definitely think that these trading uh, this trades of pawns here in the center after d5 uh favors black because of the two bishops uh Black has the bishop pair, and White only has one bishop. 
Um, here, uh, white could take away black's castling rights by going queen b5, queen d7, and trading queens. But I think that the queen trade probably favors black, who has the two bishops and is slightly better developed. Black had an immediate d4 there. Um... I'm not sure. It looks like he does go for the beef. The beef. Queen to b5. Seth, are you saying after e5? Um, so the idea here is if we take the queen, the check on c7 picks it back up. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at first, at first glance, I was like, wait, what? And then I was like, All right, I'm pretty good about spotting those forks now. At least when I'm not playing. Yeah. Yeah, and here um, we'll probably see Bishop recapturing the knight. Um, I guess there's also Bishop c6 and then capturing the knight. Um, just as a, a little intermezzo. <coughs> uh, but I guess if, if we go Bishop c6, um, since our, we know our knight's dying already, can... Uh, we just ruin Black's structure is knight f6. Or then we <laughs> then Black just leaves the queen hanging because we're also threatening their queen. And yeah, uh, that, this is where we get that, that whole uh Sophie saying last game she didn't want to or they didn't want to calculate it, so totally mm -hmm. just just do, just do what you see right off the bat and <laughs> don't try to calculate anything. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I, I guess um something I uh we didn't point out when we were talking to Sophie is it totally makes sense that they didn't want to calculate the that whole line that we talked about after um they said that they should have just moved um Bishop A four their first thought in the previous game and lost a lot of time because of it. So it was probably uh, yeah. gone. Um, didn't didn't want to get in that same situation where you spent all that time. Yeah. I think she, but she, she is taking her time. So she goes for the c6. Bishop c6 is played. Um, so here, does knight f6 work? It's a lot to think about. I'm sure that is what Sophie was thinking about uh, for the last two minutes. Yeah. Uh, and in so knight Sophie's f6, mind, pawn takes, then d castle. So that you're nice and tucked away, or is there something uh, well, better? You have to you have to move your queen right away uh, after. Oh, after oh yeah, you... the queen's under attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I forget. Um, I forgot about that. So then, does the what square does the queen want to go to? C four, maybe. Uh, but then, I guess um, the downside of all that is that our uh, king hasn't castled yet. And I, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess on queen c4, uh, the g2 pawn's dropping. So I guess knight f6 is a little too fancy. I don't think it's working. Um, so Neo Chance asks, what about knight takes b6? Uh, so knight takes b6. Um, <coughs> Yeah, I think that in that position, black probably recaptures with the a pawn, and then as soon as the queen moves, takes on g2. So I think that the, the key to all of this is that white can take on g2 if the knight moves. So I think queen d3 has to be played, or, or queen b3. Um no, queen b3 uh, would not work because there's a fork between the g-pawn and the queen after bishop takes on d5. So I think queen d3 is kind of the only move here.
Yes, yeah, this, this is this, this. It seems simple, but it's this has got some complicated lines to it. I think. Yeah. D three, it is. to d3 um and here are we taking back with the queen once again offering the the end game or i i think i would expect so if you take back with the bishop since i think that was kind of the purpose of uh, of bishop c6 uh was to keep queens on the board uh but i could be wrong i uh sophie might play queen takes and uh feel that at least the bishop here is advantageous I don't know. What do, what do you value the bishop pair at uh, in that position? Do you think uh, bishops worth? If, 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 if you trade, if you trade queens or not trading queens, what do you value it? Or yeah, you... I'd say uh, both cases with queens on the board. How do you value the bishop pair and queens off the board? How do you value the bishop pair? Um, uh... I don't know. I tend to always, I tend to get rid of bishops pretty quick. I know every, there's a lot of people that like the bishop pair, but <laughs> in my games, it always comes down to who has the knight in the end game. Cause then they always just swindle somebody with some kind of uh, fork. So that's what, yeah. That's why. And when Neil Bruce was on, we were actually talking about that. He, and he actually agreed. He was like in, in lower games, he, he actually values the knights more um, for that, for that reason. Cause someone inevitably always blows it. Uh, somehow with their knight um but to me it would seem like if the queens are off the bishops would be more powerful because then sophie has that attacking power of the two bishops and can control a lot and then yeah. meanwhile atelia is stuck with a bishop and a knight so I, that, that what what would you think if you think do you think trading the queens increases or decreases the the bishop pair I think in this position specifically, uh, I think trading queens favors black. Uh, so I think that the bishop pair would feel a lot stronger. Um, I, I do see why queens staying on the board could also um, be a plus to the bishops because the the bishops pair quite nicely with the, with the queen. Uh, but I agree that sometimes the knight and the queen pair up better. Um, so because of that, I'd, I'd be wanting to trade off the queens. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, I agree with the statement that at lower levels or, or at the scholastic level, even like when I was a kid playing chess, I loved knights because they're yeah. just tricky little bastards. Right? Well, I love them and I hate them. <laughs> I love it when I have one and then and then I'll fall apart to one. I got, I, it, was a, it was a blitz game and I just I was down. I think I had a knight and the guy, whoever I was playing, had a rook and I think like a bishop, maybe two bishops. And I won just because I just got that knight yeah. up there and just started just eating everything. He just kept walking into forks. And yeah, that, that's what happens at my level. Yeah. Yeah, ever since I started playing the marshal, uh, I've really favored bishops uh, mm -hmm. because they're so necessary to the marshal. Um, and it's made it so that I just can't take the nim so seriously as black. And that's why I can't, <laughs> can't play it. Cause there's so many lines where you give up the Bishop for the night. Uh, and I just can't play it. I, I'm, uh -huh. I, I, I love my bishops. So yeah, uh, I think that's been kind of my biggest struggle with finding a, a black, uh, repertoire against D four is I think that the, what are currently considered the best lines for black all involve a Bishop to B four. And um, it's hard for me to justify it if, if the bishop ever comes off. And I know we have a Nimzo here that the bishop didn't come off the board. Uh, and probably most Nimzos it doesn't, but there are quite a few that white can kind of force black to take the knight. And then um, then it's not a, not a uh, opening I want to play at that point. <laughs> Yeah, and you're pointing out, yeah, that this is also the first time that uh, I think Sophie has been down on the clock. So they're spending uh, a, they spent a decent four and a half minutes on that move. Yeah, and I think that that might be a a situation where 
in classical, I think you definitely spend time there. Uh, but unfortunately, here in Rapid, I think that it has to be your gut instinct. Because mm-hmm. uh, four and a half minutes on that move and two minutes on the move prior. Uh, so six and a half minutes on deciding if we want an end game or not. Yeah. I, I think that that's, that's too much. Mm-hmm. I felt that if Bishop C6 was played like it was, um, I felt Black's instinct was not to trade Queens. Uh, so I really expected Bishop takes d5 there pretty immediately. Um, but it seems that Sophie reconsidered it in that time, uh, four and a half minutes, uh, and decided that they didn't want the queens on the board. Uh, and so we got a we'll see. queenside castle. Yeah, pretty late queenside castle uh, when we're already in the end game. I guess queenside <laughs> castling um, makes sense in the end game because you're not really removing your king all that far from the center. Yeah. And I guess with the queens off, there's less of a less threats that uh, they have to worry about coming in. All right, offering a rook trade. I think as pieces come off, um, I always feel as as more pieces come off, uh, it becomes much more drawish, except in the situations where it becomes much more winning. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> except for those. Everything yeah. else. Uh, here, I think it becomes more drawish as pieces come off. Um, I don't know, because the bishop pair probably also likes fewer pieces on the board, but also, I don't know. And is, is Atulia trying to put put some pressure on Sophie now with the time? Because he's been his last couple moves, he's kind of. Well, no, I guess he did take it out. Yeah, I, I thought I thought maybe, but then once I looked back, maybe maybe he wasn't doing it that much. Maybe it was just a couple moves he felt comfortable on. Yeah, and I think it's very possible that after the first game, he kind of realized Sophie's weaknesses in in the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not saying that like Sophie's bad at time management at all, but he noticed that if Sophie gets low on the clock, uh, her insane accuracy that she plays with uh, <laughs> somewhat diminishes. So yeah. uh, I think that that's one chance he might think he has at winning these games, along with playing well, of course. Um, but one one additional factor in the game could be the time. Um, We'll see if it becomes a factor in this game again. Uh, it didn't really factor in all that much in the last game. I, they both ended with over a minute left on the clock. Yeah, I think um, I think once they kind of realized it was just a draw, none of them felt, got too pressured under the time. Yeah. So we might see something like that again. Uh, they're both back under four minutes. Sophie at three and Atulia at uh, three and a half. So Seth saying Sophie is normally pretty good with time pressure. It just, it just wasn't her. Just, it just wasn't that in the first game. Yeah, whenever I've watched Sophie play before, it's been with a uh, thirty-second increment, and I know that Sophie gets really low on time, and then they, um, oh, okay, they play really accurately with the thirty-second increment. But two-second increment is not really enough to think. It's yeah. Just, the mouse um so i think that that was kind of where we saw the difference yeah it's not it's not a it's just an increment that can help you keep from flagging but it's not an increment to to really extend and let you calculate yeah yeah so here we have to i was gonna say we have to retreat the bishop to hold the bishop pair but uh so if he decides not to do that yeah after um, all that talk about keeping the bishop pair Yeah, I'm not really sure. Do we just go knight takes c5 here? That's what I was thinking. Force force them to just kind of destroy any bit of the black's pawn structures. Oh, we see rook to c1. Wow. Okay, so... Didn't see that one. (laughs) So white leaves the bishop hanging, 
and instead attacks another bishop. So now for sure, although last move also for sure, a bishop is coming off the board. Yeah. Um, putting additional pressure though on c5 uh, if this bishop on c4 moves uh, so that we can potentially win a pawn as well. Yeah, winning that b pawn when it comes over. Oh. Yeah. No, I guess, yeah, you have to take back. Yeah, that was, that was a good move. Yeah, that was something I didn't even consider. Very strong. And here, what does black have? Rook came up to e4 and defending the, the bishop and attacking the other bishop. But I think, do we just go knight takes c5 and then retreat our own bishop? Or after knight takes c5, if the b pawn takes on c5, then bishop comes to e3, once again putting pressure on c5. But on, I guess on knight takes c5, is there another move? Uh, we can't take on f4 with the rook, or no, we can because uh, I guess the 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 fork on e6 is guarded by the bishop on c4. So I guess maybe rook takes a four. No, no, sorry, the bishop is pinned. Yeah, so I was gonna say the bishop is pinned. Yes, yeah, so if... okay. it doesn't work. Um, so. I, I think we had to go b, b takes c5, and then uh, bishop e3 will be played, putting more pressure on the c5 pawn, and then uh, rook d5 is, I think, the only way to guard it. Uh, and then just b3 from there, and the c5 pawn is being picked up. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't seem like there's any way to defend that. Yeah, so I think white is winning a pawn in this sequence. So that rook, rook c one was a, a very nice spot from Atulia. That was. Uh, that was incredible to, to see that. All right, so taking on h4. Um, so give getting the h pawn, giving up the c pawn, but now the c pawn will fall with check from rook takes c5. And then the king might be under fire there. I think rook takes c5, king b8, and now rook, uh, probably the other rook to c1 could be an idea. Also, rook c6 here uh, forks the bishop and the f6 pawn. Picking up, yeah, just another pawn. Man, he's got the attack on now. All right, so let's see if Sophie can bounce back here and... Uh, potentially salvage a draw or a, a win, but the the time pressure is going to be be pretty tough. And uh, mm -hmm. now the a seven pawn is probably falling if the bishop moves, so the king probably has to come to b seven. Uh, and then if king, or I guess rook can guard, but I think now we're just uh, it's going to say rook c one, but rook e one is also good. And I thought I thought or, it's going to go c one, but. All right, so a7 pawn falls anyway. Um, so now black is hoping to muster up some sort of attack with the the bishop along that diagonal attacking the king. Um, but hard to say. Yeah, and I mean, at any point, white can also just play f3 and shut down that bishop, and then I think white's just completely crushing at that point. And that's exactly what and we there, see. there it was. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, white, uh, white's got some time where he can sit there and kind of spend to calculate that, and Sophie just has, just has no time. I didn't even realize I, I have the engine. On. I'll turn that off because I guess I'm, I am sharing the screen. I, I think that they probably have it completely um, shut down on their side and minimized. But oh, oh gotcha. Yeah, I I saw it was up there and I was going to say something at some point, but I just wasn't looking at it. I didn't even think yeah. about them looking at it. <laughs> Man. Very well that, played. that was. I always forget that that's there, but yeah, well, well played, uh, very well played. Uh, that rookie C one was a, a very nice spot there. 
or I, I guess you just did connect to the audio. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's good. Rookie C1 was a, a very nice spot. Yeah, I, I saw that like last second. I was going to move the bishop, but then I don't know. I got so creative in the opening with like knight takes d5. That was just dumb. I forgot bishop c6 was an option. Like I thought for sure. I wasn't sure if bishop c6 was best. Because I could also take on d5. I don't know. I feel like I'm not sure how big of a difference. I don't even know if I should, I... should I even have castled queenside? I feel like I wasn't sure though. Like, maybe I should just castle kingside. <laughs> maybe. I, I, I also was fully expecting you to keep um, queens on the board. Yeah, I... I don't know like with, how. Like, with bishop d5 instead just, of queen d5. How, can you just play knight f4? Uh, I thought queen e7 check. And then you just move the bishop or something. But Like queen e2? I mean, you're still... Maybe it's um, not so clear. Yeah, I, I didn't even consider knight f4. I, I was going to castle, like, instantly. But I guess uh, I should have considered that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I thought the point of bishop c6 was to keep the queens on the board, but if, if there's no way to actually keep, keep them on, then I think it totally makes sense to do queen takes d5 there. I, yeah, I yeah. just want to play bishop c6 so I can castle, but I, I really feel like I should have castled kingside. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think it's kind of annoying given the match situation though, because like I'm sure you could have made a draw like effortlessly. And trying to push for a win is unfortunate, I guess. I think castles is like just better. I mean, I, yeah. I don't think I don't think I want to draw. Like I think I I think I have winning chances because I have two bishops. Oh for sure. No, I mean like how much time you use though put you in a tough situation. Yeah, I think short yeah. castles. You're probably just better. I don't know what I was intent. I was intending to play knight c3, I think. And um, bishop probably just. Well, actually, I don't have to play bishop c4. I could go back. It's probably. Which may be better. Yeah. yeah. And then I was going to hope that I beat you to the files. Like, that was my only chance. Like, I have to play rook e1. Probably my mm -hmm. bishop's coming to f4. And then I play rook ad1. Yeah, I got you. Just hope that it's symmetrical. On structure and like yeah <laughs> i mean yeah just i i don't i don't know like <sighs> castle and queen size and move i'm gonna regret so that's kind of the main thing i learned i guess from this game yeah it's kind of unfortunate that like bishop c4 doesn't just win on the spot because it almost does but somehow knight c3 is just in time, like with Rookie mm -hmm. One, Knight C3. Um, but yeah, I honestly, no I should just go back. Maybe I don't. Like my bishop isn't even good on C4. What am I doing? Yeah, I was thankful that you put more pieces on the open C file. I was like, if there's gonna be any chance in this game, it's gonna come from that. Yeah, it was truly unfortunate. <laughs> Um, the, the, the lines that you're playing are insane, though. Apparently, I got a review theory because I, I shouldn't be fighting for equality with the white pieces after like 10 moves. It's really bad. Okay, oh well. Got to get trying to practice things. openings. You know, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to get better at openings. Are you, are you planning on playing over the board soon, or have you been playing? Yeah, over I, the board? I I just played in a tournament. Like, oh, fun! How'd it go? Yeah, I did like tie for second, so not bad. Just, just another day. <laughs> but it was okay, like. Yeah, but it was a small tournament. It wasn't like a big open tournament. It wasn't. I didn't go to Vegas or anything. You oh, know? okay, okay, gotcha. <laughs> if I had tied for second in Vegas, oh my god, that would be awesome. <laughs> was like, I was gonna I'll say be, you should be more excited about that. That would be like unreal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't one of those really, really big open tournaments. It was just like a small like club tournament, you know. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, I guess we're doing what, like one more game. Yeah, I think so. All right, good luck. Yeah, thanks, you too. All right, so last game of the match, everyone. Uh, Sophie playing the white pieces, hoping for uh, a win uh, would be very nice to um, get the 
get the match close closer to equal. Of course, the the match has already been won by uh, Atulia, but uh, still would be nice. Uh, so, <laughs> I guess we've kind of transposed from a uh, uh, Cairo Khan to what almost looks like a Queen's Gambit decline. Uh, I think this was the Cairo Khan uh, Penov attack with C four. That's what I thought. Of. Yeah, it looked like Queen's Game but coming right off, and then all of a sudden it just switched pretty quick. <laughs> if I can, all right. Typical yeah, fashion, so, blitzing these out. They know they know what they're doing here. Yeah, um, faster than right. I can process anything. That's what they're doing. White has an IQP now. Um, uh, this I've never really liked the Panov attack because of that uh, going straight for the IQP. Um, but uh, of course, with all the miners still on the board, uh, IQP can be pretty nice for white uh, for dynamic play. Uh, but unfortunately, if the miners start coming off, I, it's a, an eventual structural weakness. I, I know no theory here in the pan of attack, so not going to be any use on discussing these uh, this opening. But... <laughs> one one day, I'll um, hopefully I'll get to the point where I have to worry about theory. <laughs> right now, I just try not to blunder pieces. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Max. Uh... If you can get the attack going with the with the pieces, I'm sure the Panov feels real nice. And here, uh, Bishop C2, I guess, um, potentially I as a queen to D3. Oh, I need to stop drawing arrows. I don't know if they can see them, but <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that they have everything minimized. Um, yeah, I'm I'm guessing they do. Yeah. Um, just in case, like they have it on the other screen and accidentally see it in there. Yeah. They're, their eye and I'm, I'm pretty sure that they have it, it minimized to not distract them um so after h6 um here just asking the bishop a question yeah asking the bishop a question is uh our our wonderful grandmaster jesse cry would say <laughs> yeah man i haven't even hit any of my uh jesse cry sound bites tonight Okay. Uh, okay. Knows knows all says H six is such a rookie mistake in the IQP position. H sixes. Uh, I think uh, it might be a little rude to call uh, a national master a rookie, but um, yeah, if H six is known not to be uh, all that great, uh, it could be a mistake here. Uh, E. Rosenberg explaining it a bit more, saying that because you want to reserve g6 in some lines. To defend b1, h7. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I, I can totally see why h6 might be a mistake. Um, but uh, I definitely don't suggest calling either of these players a rookie. <laughs> I will not be doing that. Yeah. Both of them strong 2200 players um, with the National Master titles. So. And then when G6 is played, White will have major sack ideas. That's what Max is saying. Bishop will drop back to keep tension on the knight, which defends H7, and then G6. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh, does David play the pan off as well? Very cool. Okay, so here, what are what are Black's ideas? Black wants to stop up the the D pawn and also get some defense on the on the king side. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm 
not familiar enough with these lines. I don't, I don't, I'm trying to figure out where where he's going to go. What's he, what he's trying to work for. Max, the saddest thing about Ultimate Sensei was that I could not watch any of your guys' lessons with David and then that um, Chess Dojo has VOD set to only be for two weeks, so I couldn't watch any of the replays when it was <laughs> over. Whereas like all the other coaches have like infinitely long VODs, so I was able to watch all of the other lessons after the event was over, but I really want to watch David's lessons. Well, now that we're partnered, you can watch it for up to sixty days after uh, after it airs. So, if there's an when the ultimate sensei uh, two happens, whoever's on will be able to watch their vods a lot longer. Yeah. Do you have like access to the old vods as the channel, no, or do they? No, just it doesn't. It, it used because yeah, before you're a partner. It only keeps them for 14 days. And then once you get partner status, they keep the VODs for uh, for 60 days. Yeah, 60. Um, but yeah. even still, it, it, they just delete them. They just like hold them on their hard drives, I guess. And then they just purge them all. So okay. we don't have access to them, which is part of the reason why the good stuff I try to dump onto the second YouTube channel. Yeah, um, yeah, I really appreciate that you do that. Uh, I really wish that um, they did that back in the Ultimate Sensei days. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure that those lessons were, were gold. Um, yeah, that that's what I was doing before we were partner. I was downloading basically every stream. So in yeah. like a couple weeks of then bringing me on and then Kosi was like, all right, you have to do this now because <laughs> he got yeah. tired. Of, I had like a like almost like a terabyte of uh, videos after just like several weeks yeah now i only download the stuff that's going to get cut down and then anything like this i don't know if we're going to edit this all this i just throw up immediately on the or not immediately we have to wait 24 hours uh, for partner status but then we'll throw that on the second youtube cool which the link is there if you're not subscribed make sure you go ahead hit the like hit the subscribe you gotta do the streamer stuff yeah i can't do it <laughs> All right, so G6 was played. Um, this is what chat was pointing out, uh, uh, that in a lot of these structures, the reason H6 is not played is to support G6. And now, as Max was pointing out, there might be sack ideas here on G6 now that the H pawn is not defending the G6 pawn. Uh, so all of chat is crying for Rook E6. Uh, if rook e6, then uh, bishop takes h4, um, and then rook takes g6 is what Chad is asking about. But then Max says, if rook e6, then maybe knight f4, uh, forking the, the, the rook and queen, and also the knight will be protecting the g6 square. Uh, but uh, Rosenberg points out then rook g6, which comes with with chat yeah he's point out knight f4 is deadly serious Uh, so we don't see rook e6 to see if knight f4 was truly blocking it. Uh, it looked to me uh, that it, knight f4 looked pretty nice. Uh, so I think that's why Sophie decided not to take on e6, uh, instead playing bishop g3. Uh, Tally saying, just play rook e6 and hope you won't see it. Playing hope chess? Uh, You're not supposed to do that. I read that. Yeah, if, if it's bullet, definitely, definitely. Oh, yeah, do that. Yeah. Uh, if it's blitz, uh, maybe uh, in rapid. No, it's uh, they've got enough time to think. Uh, if it's classical, you spend 20 minutes there seeing if there's truly anything that you can go for on either side. And then that's why classical has such high accuracy. <laughs> yeah, another title part player. Yeah, they totally won't see it. <laughs> Queen d7 was played. 
further protecting the E6 pawn. Yeah, just play scholars and hope they won't see it. If they do, just abort the game, right? How, how many how many moves do you get before you can abort? Is it two moves or if, after you play the second move, is it uh, resigns instead of abort? Yeah, is is it even is it two moves? Yeah, I guess I think it's something like that. Yeah, just wait to see what they do, then just abort. <laughs> yeah, go e4 um, and bishop c4, and it, or, or or queen h5 or something, and then if they make a move that stops the scholar's mate, then just abort the game and go to the next one. Oh, is it only one move? So after, even after one move, you can't even abort? Gotcha. Ah, shoot. There goes that plan. <sighs> now how are we going to ever get to master? <laughs> it's always funny, like, when I'm playing, like, Bullet or something like that, or Blitz. Even if it doesn't happen anymore in Blitz, and somebody still tries to go for the scholar's mate, I'm like... <laughs> I guess they still catch some people off guard every once in a while, but I'm like, come on. I'm not that dumb. I don't even know. I mean, I'm dumb, but not that dumb. Been. I don't know how many years it's been since someone has tried scholars to me. <laughs> uh, Maybe you I should try it. Nobody's expecting it. Yeah. I think uh, I'm trying to think if it happened to me at all in high school. So I'm trying to think. I know I haven't seen it since college, but did it happen in high school or has it been since like <laughs> middle school? Since I've seen an attempted scholar's mate, do I even know how to defend against scholar's mate at this point? You know, if no one tries, <laughs> that's that's a thing. You, you can get caught pretty quickly, and it's something so simple, and then then you just haven't seen it in so long, <laughs> and that's how they get you. Uh, e Rosenberg is saying uh, B four is also an idea to go B five to kick the knight, and then go knight to E five. My apologies for the yawning. Uh, there was a massive, massive thunderstorm here last night, and it kept me up. Uh, at, at one point, my wife and I came downstairs because, like, we heard one that sounded like it was potentially like next to our house. So oh, uh, we just wanted to be downstairs to make sure, you know, if the house got struck by lightning, we weren't uh, vulnerable <laughs> to it. <laughs> Sleeping on like a rubber bed or something. Yeah. We, we just walked downstairs for like 10 or 15 minutes and then it sounded like it got farther away from us. So then we went upstairs, but, but uh, yeah, that was at like one fifteen a.m. So oh, geez. Uh, we're both pretty tired today. Yeah, it's not, it's not super easy to just go right back to sleep after that. Once you're all amped up. Uh, Tali saying, uh, if <laughs> people pre-move, they go for it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> did you play uh, yesterday, Drew? Did you Did you guys have games on Sunday, or was it just? I can't remember when when their tournament went on. And then did, oh. did you go home? Did you fly back after that, or did you go back this morning? Cause that's a that's a long weekend and long work day. <laughs> oh, Amanda did Friday. This, uh, so okay. you came back this morning and then had to work <laughs> this morning on their red eye. Oh man, man, take that is some dedication. Take the vacation day, man. <laughs> yeah, just use, use the PTO day, man. Yeah, uh, I I would not be able to function after that. I can barely function when like back before COVID when I was flying up to New York like once a month for, for work, like, you know, when I would be waking up at 3 AM to get on the red eye to, to fly from <laughs> Texas to New York. Uh, once I got there, I just <laughs> half that day, I wasn't <laughs> awake enough to actually do my work anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's what like you can try to do it, but at some point it's just like pointless. <laughs> You're just like too worn yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, so 95. Can you play that now? So the knight cannot recapture on e5 because uh, of the pin. Uh, so that's the idea behind 95. And I think that's why bishop f6 was played. Um, but even then, uh, if 95 bishop takes, uh, I think our either 
taking back with the bishop, we have a really nice bishop attacking the king, or taking back with the pawn, we no longer have an IQP. So that's uh, an idea. Uh, mm-hmm. So knight e4 um, is also being suggested by um, Roisenberg, and uh, that will push back the the bishop, and then potentially the bishop can jump in the d or sorry, the knight can jump in the d6, being supported by the bishop. Uh, so if he just we went see. straight for she went straight for or they went straight for the uh, ninety five. Yeah. Um, so if you're playing ninety five, bishop takes. So now, uh, bishop taking on e five would set the bishop up quite nicely against the king. Uh, but if Sophie's tired of playing this IQP, uh, they can also take back with the pawn. And that's uh, what Sophie planned. Uh, ended up doing um so they take back with the pawn no longer having the iqp uh once minor pieces start coming off the board the iqp becomes a weakness so i completely understand taking back with the pawn here here uh um black can potentially do something to threaten the queen on d3 um we don't have any reveal check, unfortunately. Um, but <laughs> uh, excuse me on the on again. Um, I think that maybe putting a, a, a rook on to d8 and then doing a reveal attack with the with the knight could be nice. Yeah, Max, I totally agree. Two pins and a weakness on F6. Uh, White is feeling really good here. Especially without the IQP anymore. Yeah, is there is there any need to try to break that pin now and move that queen? Or is yeah, that just I'd wasted? Say, I'd say rook F to C8 um, both uh, makes the pin on the D5 knight no longer really a, a threat anymore because... Uh, the queen no longer is weak on d7 and on guarded. Um, also threatens potential movements of the knight. Um, so I think that could be good. And then as soon as the queen... If the queens come off, then there are no longer any pins. So black can celebrate that. So uh, rook fd8 um, was played. And then... Um, yeah, I think Rook A C eight is a potential follow up at some point. So, I think those are the two best places for the rooks. So it makes sense to use the F Rook to place on D eight. Yeah, and um, Max is right. Uh, Knight E four seems pretty natural, uh, eyeing that F six hole as well as that D six hole um, would feel pretty nice. Uh, 1800 strength is saying 94, the knight takes e5. Um, because now that, that knight would be attacking the queen. Instead, we see rook ad8, uh, rook ad1, sorry. Um, big battle the on the d file, yeah. And now again, the knight cannot really move because the queen drops. Uh, instead, now uh, the rook drops, I, I should say. Um, white would be winning a rook. Knight takes c3. Um, if knight takes c3, queen takes queen. Oh, yeah. And then, Not anymore. Uh, Sidestep that either way. Does white have time for a6 and... Or sorry, does black have time for a6 and b5 is the question from Rosenberg in chat. Um, I think... Now that the pins have been sidestepped, maybe that's what black can do next. Uh, though 
honestly, I don't know if it achieves much because I think White will feel very comfortable with the bishop on c2 instead of on a4 anyway. All right, so we see knight to e4. All right, now um, knight takes e5 is no longer working because, of course, just the bishop takes, and we no longer can take the a4 bishop with our uh, uh, black can no longer take the a4 bishop uh, with their queen. Uh, Tali, I think knight takes c3 was just losing to queen takes queen, was it not? Or I guess um, maybe the idea is if queen takes queen, rook takes, rook takes. Uh, no, because even if you take the a4 bishop, the b7 bishop is falling. Uh, so it's not two pieces for the rook. It's just uh, an exchange. So I, I feel like uh, white would really like that. So I don't think knight takes c3 is available. Um, e. Rosenberg is asking knight f4. Um, yeah, knight f4 reveals the rook to the to the queen. Um, so two threats onto the queen at the same time. That could be a nice spot. So nose, you you like you like the position for white earlier, but you're not feeling it anymore. Yeah, I think that goes to show that even if uh, h6 was a mistake, uh, it, it, chess is not an easy game. Uh, even if a side makes a mistake, the the other side's not always always winning directly from it. So. <laughs> All right, so black is under four minutes now. Yeah, so E. Rosenberg is still pointing out the knight f4 uh, with, so threatening the queen twice, so the queen has to move, and then even saying that there might be knight g2 ideas at some point after that. So it's a potential idea. I didn't really see where the knight was going after it went to f4, after the queen moves, but. Part of you. I, I really apologize to everyone for my yawning. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's gotten annoying by now. Um, but yeah, I, I think that could make some sense because then this this diagonal could be really strong for the bishop. Uh, I don't quite see the full attack, but um, still things to think about. Yeah, I'm just it's trying to figure just, out a way that one of them gets through too. They've kind of yeah, got it's just <laughs> Rosenberg saying they've uh, noticed that I yawn more after reading his <laughs> comments. <laughs> um, get, some, get some better comments. You're boring our guy to death over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that uh, there's just so much to think about in chess all the time that it, I, I really struggle to play anything other than classical, but then I notice that when I'm playing classical, I, I don't think enough. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I'm looking at someone else's game, I see so much to think about and so much to, to wonder about. And then I just, I move too quickly myself. So I don't know why. It's always weird how you're in such a different mindset. And like when somebody else is playing, I guess the pressure's off of you. So then you just, you just see stuff. You're, you have like a clearer head. Yeah, knows knows all. It might have been plus two, five-ish moves ago with the engine, but neither player has an engine while they're playing. So, um, it's chess is a hard game uh, for sure. Yeah.
yeah, it's so much weird how much better you are when you watch a game than when you play it. it blows my mind. Yeah, I wonder what my ELO is for uh, games I'm watching compared to my actual rating. <laughs> yeah, and so there, there's two sides to it. Um, when you're really focused on a game when you're uh, playing, uh, you might not be focused when you're watching. But if you're really focused when watching, there's no pressure anymore. So also that can help. So there, I think there's two sides to it. Uh, like if I'm just watching like a Fabi play Magnus or something uh, in, a, in a rapid event or something, I, I'm not really all that focused on the game and trying to think of, of it myself. I just kind of watch it. But, you know, when I was watching Kostya play, I was commentating and, and really involved in the game. It was the only game I was watching. It was the only thing I was doing. I didn't have Twitter up or anything like that. So because of that, I felt like I was thinking at a very strong level mm-hmm. and um, without any pressure on me, I think I could think a lot more. Uh, I think, especially like in the, his game against Glodora, uh, I could not have handled that position as black. And um, I think everyone in chat kind of was a little with me that black felt worse. And except for uh, a few people in chat were also saying like, Hey, Kusty is probably in his element here. It's a King's Indian. It's kind of just how you feel. Um, but yeah, totally felt that watching i was thinking about a lot more than in the game i think i would just been like oh i'm getting crushed by this 26 50 grandmaster you know (laughs) yeah 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 you don't miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take (laughs) yeah wise words better not yawn after that one that was a good one yeah that was a good one i can't yawn now (laughs) So A6 was played just like uh, Rosenberg was saying earlier um, that A6, B5 might be an idea. And now that the queen is on C2, I totally uh, agree that uh, the bishop probably wanted to be on C2 if if bumped back. So now, now that square is gone, it's pretty tough. Uh, knight jumps into F6. Um, does this uh, lose a pawn or That's how what... are we playing this? I assumed that was going to lose a pawn. That's why I thought maybe the knight was going to try to go to like D6 or something instead originally. Uh, so I guess there's pressure on the C6 knight. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about chess. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop takes c6 and bishop to e5. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. So the idea being that once this knight on c6 falls, uh, the bishop would be supported by the rook on e5, pinning the queen to the king and winning material. So gotcha. Was, okay. Yeah. So b5, um, black had to instead first stopper up that bishop so that uh, the knight can still protect the e5 square. So I think that white was kind of going for a trap there and black didn't fall for it. And now white has lost the pawn. It's kind of my assessment of the last few moves. <laughs> Drew, you think your opponent made an illegal move? <laughs> <laughs> Very possible. Uh, or you're like me and just get your coordinates all mixed up and just completely mark down the wrong move. Yeah, when I was... um going through for one of my one of the streams i did i think it was the um the thursday stream uh, i think was when i talked about like the finding counterplay i was going through my mm-hmm. old notation book for the world open uh back in 2017 so four years ago uh and i'm pretty sure i made an illegal move in one of these games <laughs> it's like so i thought i just wrote it down wrong uh like the square that the knight moved to I thought I wrote it down wrong, but then a later that knight moved from the square that it said it was on. So I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that I moved my knight like uh, instead of like two up and one over. I'm pretty sure I moved it three up and one over. Uh, ah, the old a, extended extended knight. Yeah, which is kind of embarrassing to think about now because I really wasn't a noob or anything like that four years ago. Like I've been playing since I've been playing in tournaments since I was in fifth grade. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was when I was in college, so I was not a noob by any 
by any means. So should not be making illegal moves. But <laughs> I just notate them wrong. That's why I've been trying to like do more handwriting out the um, like puzzles and that that kind of stuff I'm doing is trying to handwrite out all the lines because like I'll 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 handwrite out a line and then I'll go back and check it. And I got the line right. I just I just marked it wrong. I was like, oh no, the bishop to f seven was really f six. Yeah. So, like I know I had the line right, but I'm still marking it wrong. Yeah. All right. So we're yeah. getting- usually for me it's the incorrect notation, but mm-hmm. yeah. And to to far Eastern's question, uh, there's usually one or two arbiters per like fifty boards or so. So uh, <laughs> the, definitely the arbiters can't catch every illegal move. All right, so we're getting down to might be another time scramble. There's still a lot of pieces on and both under both under a minute. Yeah, both under a minute. Um, black is up a pawn, uh, but down on the clock. Uh, so if Sophie can move quickly, uh, hopefully they can take advantage of the, that time discrepancy and try to win. But it, I think it's really a, it plays a lot of bullet, it seems. Um, so I think that he's comfortable in this time scramble. scramble. <laughs> and here we see the time advantage dwindling. So I, I, I definitely think uh, Otulia probably feels comfortable here. Yeah, he, he did say he, he does play a lot of bullets, so it might be in his wheelhouse. I just I can't play bullet. I haven't played bullet in years. Oh. And, I played two, like I played a bunch today, and I know I shouldn't be playing it, <laughs> but it's so fun. Uh, Far Eastern, if your opponent makes an illegal move, you can call the arbiter over, and they actually give you more time on your clock. Is how it's it's done. All right, Sophie's, and I think if you, is it two two illegal moves or three that your opponent just uh forfeits is that is that right so you're i I know you're allowed like a couple like you said so but if you make a certain number then they're just like no you're done yeah all right and here black invading with the rook um yeah and white already back down on the clock so both under 10 seconds Ooh, some some crazy attack here on the g2 pawn and uh it's looking like it'll be hard to defend under the time pressure um white going for a last ditch effort on the king uh, i'm not seeing seeing any threefold i think that that means black wins right uh, i think so i yep. think that oh oh uh, yeah then no, no. yep okay yeah, Ooh. man, another one that came down with again. this crazy scramble. An- an- another time scramble. That was an- yeah, another hard fought finish so there. Jeez. Oh man. I cannot win any positions. I swear. No, it's just unfortunate because I'm not. I don't think I'm playing objectively well. I'm just playing for like this nonsense that shouldn't be working. But today's just not your day, unfortunately. I cannot win any positions. Like I'm physically incapable of like winning a single position. I don't know why. I think that it looked like any time that you had the like great advantage, it was uh, unfortunate. The time disadvantage was kind of what came back, but. Um... Maybe that's well, I mean, the yeah. work on before your next tournament. But I mean, you're getting into these really nice positions. So definitely playing well for sure. So don't feel I, bad yeah. about it. I mean, I, I, I just see that happening to me time and time again. And uh, it needs to stop. Um, like, I don't know. It, it's usually in rapid that this happens. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm like not that bad at like converting good positions and like classical but longer time controls but yeah i mean this tends to happen and, um, yeah Kostya said to especially me especially tilting Kostya said to me that rapid's really difficult to play because uh you feel like you have time but you don't <laughs> uh, yeah. so I, like plus we don't play rapid like normally if that makes sense like i assume you also grew up playing classical chess and then nowadays all i play is bullet online so 
I don't know how to manage yeah. my time. In I've always, I've always kind of thought about that a little bit. Like, um, rapid's such a weird time control for me, I guess. Like, cause I don't know. It's like, I, I, I feel like, I feel like I tend to perform the worst in rapid just generally. Like, yeah. like, I don't know. Like, I'm good at like, I, I guess, I guess usually I'm like, it's like, I'm good at really fast time controls and really slow time controls. And then everything in the middle is just weird. Yeah, even like 5 0 for me, I struggle. Like, yeah. I don't know. Because there's enough time that you can think a bit, but not enough time to think a lot. So if the, if the yeah. position gets too complicated, you can't really think all the way through it, but maybe you spend four minutes anyway. And then now you've got so little time that later your opponent squeezes you with the time. I mean, uh, my games felt like I was playing a bullet game. Just. I don't know why I was unable to get like one decent position out of the opening. Like to get beat in what four different bar I, I played D4. I've played D4 my entire life. I've played the Karakan my entire life. And like four unique variations. Like I didn't change anything. Sophie changed in all the in like both um second legs. And was still just better. Like I need to fix that, I guess. I can't be doing this badly. Out of the get go. Yeah, um, I I've, I feel like I've had that problem before as well because openings aren't like typically my strength, I guess. But I I mean I did I did some targeted prep because like I don't know I always I always try to prep for everything that I know like that I that is like coming up if like I have advance notice. But that's gonna be weird because like this isn't good practice for my actual tournament because my actual tournament like the pairings just come out immediately so I can't prep. Oh, so yeah, especially that'll be a experience. little bit different. You get the pairing like five five minutes before you go to your round. Oh, yeah, man. I mean there's no time to prep. Like if I don't if I can if I only have five minutes before my round I can't prep. Like exactly. Like I'm not going to. I mean I can but I'm not going to <laughs> Um, besides, I don't know, maybe just looking up like which first move they play. I don't know, but just to be prepared um, mentally, I don't know. But it's just, yeah. I'm, I'm really, really trying to get better at openings. I mean, basically, if that if those are a show like of your opening strength, I'm terrified to play you over the board. That's for sure, because I can't be. I'm like I'm like minus one every game with white. If this is a classical game, I go 0-4, no questions asked. So, just so happens. I, yeah, I, it's just such a common thing. I just cannot convert any positions. I mean, I guess, I guess sometimes I can if, like, I'm, I don't know, but my brain is dead, and I just, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they were good. They were good games. They're exciting to watch. They were definitely interesting. E each one was like completely different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was very nice to see uh, the change-ups in the openings, uh, because uh, then we got f four fresh new games instead of uh, repeated second-round ones. Uh, but uh, I either way, it would have been fun to watch. I, I think all the games were really exciting. Um, so. Both players, both of you guys played really well. Uh, so, props to both of you. Um, Definitely. Yeah, good games. Um, it was just it was rough. Yeah, it happens. Like all of the games were a coin flip. We had under one second, I think, each in every game, except for the second one. I think the second one was still had some time. So, mm -hmm. at the end, it just turned into like who can make the most random move fastest. It, it definitely felt yeah. like right there at the end for a couple of them, they could have gone e either way really quickly. <laughs> no, like that last game, I I just got very fortunate that none of the tactics worked in Sophie's favor because like there were multiple times that Queen H6 should have ended the game or like that type of stuff. But I was just in time with like a spite check that would lead to me winning. So it was just very unfortunate, I guess. But yeah. I, all, I don't know how often y'all do this, but I hope it was up to par. I, I know the games, the start of the games were very rough, at least from my point of view, but I had a blast. I appreciate the invite. Yeah, we, we appreciate yeah, both of you coming on to do this. Um.
I think they're they're trying to do these kind of matches more and more often. So if there's a a rematch or one of you taking on somebody else in the future, I think we gotta gotta have both of you do it more. It was entertaining to watch. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I had fun. Um, I hope to be able to do this stuff more as well. I don't know. Um, and I, I hope I do better in the actual tournament this weekend. <laughs> Where are you playing? Also, oh, it's this weekend. Or what are you playing? Um, the Susan Polgar Foundation Girls Invitational Online Tournament. Um, it's it's basically a mega rapid, but it's 15 plus 2 instead of 15 plus 10. And it's 7 rounds. So it's a mega rapid, but like a little bit less intense. Gotcha. Good luck to you. Are you doing yeah, another one of these matches to prepare, or uh, what else are you doing to prepare for it? Um, this this is it. I mean, like the like for like this whole week before the tournament, I I kind of I kind of just want to like take a. Because I've been packed with chess. I, I just like finished an actual over the board tournament, and now I just played this. And so I kind of want to take a break so that I can like um, kind of reset my brain and you know mm -hmm. <laughs> ref ref refresh my brain. I guess, yeah. That's fair. So totally. Fair. Are you, are you yeah. going to be streaming that this weekend? I assume. Um, I don't think that's like going to be allowed. Oh, okay. Fair. Is it the is that part of the like the Denker Barber? Are those all around this, or is that a different one? That's different. That's like the national or what's it called? Herring girl, like herring. Ah, uh, okay, okay, my bad. I got them confused. But either way, I'm sure you'll do well, especially with like that level of prep. You should be fine. I hope so. Crossing my fingers, praying. You know. I mean, that was me every game. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm you know, just going to hope for the best and yeah, I'm excited. Very, very cool. Yeah, good luck. And uh, I guess we'll I guess we'll end it here unless anybody else has any last words. But I uh, just want to thank you guys again for for coming on. Michiko is shouting you out, Sophie, saying you're going to rock it. If you're if you're not looking at our chat, she's. She's hyping you up. <laughs> but uh, all right, I guess we'll end it there. And uh, thanks, thanks for everybody for tuning in, and thank you to the two of you for joining, putting the show on for us. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you.